in Chronicles 16, 31, it says, Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. We serve an awesome and powerful God that controls everything, not only on this planet, but in the entire universe. Romans 4, 17, part B, says, God calls those things which do not exist as though they did. That's the kind of power he has. And Revelation 13, 8b says, tells us that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. From God's point of view, the cross had already taken place. How do we know? Because Enoch had already been taken to heaven. Moses was resurrected before Israel entered the promised land. And Elijah was caught up in a fiery chariot. They could not have happened without the cross. Jesus' acts of mercy were dependent on the cross taking place. Matthew 8, 14 through 17 says, Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. Mary, many healed in that evening. Many were healed in that evening. When, e when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen? How many are sick here today? You see, it was at the cross that Jesus took upon himself our spiritual and physical infirmities, providing forgiveness, healing, and eternal life. We've witnessed individuals receiving these blessings before the cross as we read the Old Testament, as we read the New Testament. We have God's promises before the cross, like in Isaiah 55, 11, which says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Because of Jesus' victory over Satan's temptations, victory over the cross, and death, <clears throat> he declared in Matthew 18, 28, 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. And because of him being all-powerful, we can live without fear. And that's what the biggest thing that the devil tries to do is, oh, they won't like it or whatever. You know, this week with the uh, yard sale that we've been doing every day since Wednesday, trying to get rid of all of their possessions, or most of them, 95% of them, Now, watch God work. It, uh, I didn't have anybody refuse the great controversy or desire of ages. Not one. 
and I figure somewhere around 50, 60 books. I didn't count exactly. We have 80. I had two cases, one of each. And some of my neighbors even took them, which had not shown any spiritual interest before. So the Lord's Supper here reveals God's power over even death. Jesus asked us to participate in this meaningful service so we would never forget what he has done for us and is doing and will do. The Lord's Supper is a memorial to the greatest evidence of God's love for us. Amen? And I find comfort in the fact that God has all power over the universe. And he, he's already there taking care of things ahead of time. And because of the cross which the Lord's Supper commemorates, no matter where we are in the world, he's there. And he can be with us and protect us from whatever. But you know, this life is not all. So even if he chooses to let us slip into the sleep of death, He's still with us. And the next thing we'll know is Jesus has come. He wants us to be his witnesses. You know, not just pew warmers, but his witnesses. Did you hear me? Witnesses. Witnesses of what he's done in your life. How many have been blessed by Jesus? I should see every hand. Because even though we get struck with illnesses and this and that and car accidents and who knows what, he's still with us and he brings us through the difficulty. Witness of what he has done for you to everyone around every chance you get. You don't have to hit them over the head with the Bible. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is tell what he's done and say, I want to serve a loving God that provides and takes care of when no one else can. Witness of what he's done in the past, what he's doing today, and the hope that we have of eternity with him. Now, I don't know what eternity with him is going to be like. All I know is the word says, I has not seen, and I've seen some beautiful things. Ear has not heard. And when I hear singing, like this morning, like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. I can't imagine what he's got planned. I just don't know. But he has something special for us. All week people have said, is the house for sale? No. <laughs> but he's got a mansion for us. It's even better than anything we got here. But in addition, he's given us mercy and forgiveness and grace along the way. Amen? Amen. So this morning, we're coming to the table saying, I want to follow you and continue following you. And this is commemorating what you've done for us. So at this time, we will separate for the ordinance of humility and the first room in Boggs Hall to the right is for couples. And the one past the women's restroom is for men. And then 
the women, single women, will meet in the uh, fellowship hall. So at this time, let us separate for the ordinance of humility and then come back for this service. To leave this morning, we'll have baskets at the back <clears throat> to collect an offering for those that may be in need within the church. So please remember this offering as you leave this morning. Let's bow our heads for prayer. <clears throat> Loving Father, we thank you for what you accomplished on the cross that we could never do, what you are doing in our lives and what you will do. And may this service remind us of how much you love us, that you even willingly laid down your life for ours. We ask for your blessing just now in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>